It's our new segment on Wake Up Central where we continue to answer your Arkansas questions big and small and this morning just three days ahead of kickoff in Fayetteville. We had a viewer ask how did the Razorbacks get their name? Well, I'll tell you what. That's a great question. Hog calls run from generation to generation like the Razorbacks run through the A. For over a century, falls in Arkansas have meant one thing, football season, and this Saturday it all starts once again. But did you know it wasn't always the Razorbacks who took the field for the University of Arkansas? We caught up with Razorback historian and Hog Zone contributor Jim Harris. Their mascot was just the Cardinals because they had red jerseys, Cardinal jerseys. According to the University of Arkansas, the team was named the Razorbacks after an undefeated 7-0 season in 1909 and a famous speech from the first head hog. The coach then, Hugo Bezdek, got off the train and a big crowd was there to, to greet the Razorbacks. I, I think it was after beating LSU or something. The name was an instant hit among the student body, which voted in 1910 to change the school's official mascot from the Cardinals to the Razorbacks. That he said, boy, we played like a bunch of wild Razorback hogs. Now our question this morning comes from Little Rock. Why do the Razorbacks always play on Black Friday instead of the Saturday after Thanksgiving? Well, that's a great question. There have been plenty of memorable moments for the Razorbacks the day after Thanksgiving. Looking, steps, throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Arkansas! The Miracle on Markham. The Miracle on Markham Part 2. And Sam Pittman's first win on Black Friday one year ago. It all started 26 years ago on a rainy day at War Memorial Stadium. The Golden Boot will be awarded to the victor, symbolizing the rivalry that's developed between LSU and Arkansas. Unfortunately, that was a 17-7 loss to the Tigers, but it was just the beginning. The Hogs and the Bayou Bengals played 16 Black Friday games from 1996 to 2013. LSU winning 11 of those games, but the most memorable battle went to the Hogs. A 50 to 48 triple overtime victory over then the top ranked team in the country that inspired a generational hog war cry. I got that wood and that's how you pronounce it ain't Arkan. It's Arkansas, baby. In 2014, the SEC replaced LSU with Missouri for the Black Friday game. The Tigers hold a six and two record against the Hogs in that time. But last season was a different story as Arkansas soundly defeated Missouri 34 to 17. Now the Razorbacks will try to defend the battle line trophy in Columbia on Friday, where unfortunately they are 0 and 4 at Missouri. But Pittman's squad is confident heading to Mizzou. So coach, what are we going to do after the ball game? But our question this morning it is timely just ahead of Oaklawn beginning live racing this Friday. Where exactly does Oaklawn get its name? That is a great question. This Friday, the bugle will sound and the gates will open in hot springs. For over a century, horse racing has had a home at Oaklawn Park. It all dates back to the late 19th century where Oaklawn wasn't the only racetrack. According to Oaklawn's records, a track named Sportsman's Park was opened in the late 1890s. Essex Park opened on Malvern Road in 1904, and even Little Rock had a race meet as well. However, by 1920, Oaklawn was the only track left. According to the Encyclopedia of Arkansas History and Culture, the name Oaklawn came from the rural community in which the track would be built, which in turn took its name from what Peter Lepitoral an early settler to the area called his home, around which a large stand of ancient oaks stood. Chicago architect Zachary Taylor Davis was hired to design Oaklawn's glass-enclosed heated grandstand, among the first of its kind in the country in 1904. The grandstand could reportedly seat 1,500 people. A decade later, Davis would design Wrigley Field, the longtime and current home of the Chicago Cubs. According to an advertisement in the Sentinel Record, 
the Oakland Jockey Club's inaugural meeting ran February 13th through March 18th of 1905 with six races carded daily. Now our question this morning comes from Moralton. Why does UCA's football field have purple and gray stripes on it? Well, that's a great question. Over the past decade, the UCA football program has been a model of consistency with a high-powered offense, a loyal fan base, and maybe the most unique field in college football. This is our 12th football season on the stripes. 12 years, which is hard to believe. Athletic Director Dr. Brad Teague says just over a decade ago, UCA, they used a natural grass at the stadium. Then the decision was made to switch to artificial turf. We ran the numbers and actually figured out you know, you save on maintenance, fuel, water, paint, fertilizer. Dr. Teague saw this change as an opportunity to make a splash. And then our creative person said, well, what do you think about this? And he threw in the stripes, purple and gray. And I was like, wow, well, that's interesting. I, I kind of like it. However, Dr. Teague did not want to make this decision alone. So he brought in students, players and faculty to discuss their options. We had an all-purple option. We had um, every 10-yard stripes. We had uh, what we called the purple zones, which was the 20-yard line in instead of red zones, purple zones, the rest gray. The stripes was the clear consensus winner. Now, the timing of the announcement caught just as much attention as the field itself. April 1st, 2011, we announced on April Fool's Day that we were doing stripes. And it got a lot of national attention. I was on radio shows, TV shows around the country. People thought we were kidding and we were not. So that summer we installed the stripes and it's been that way ever since. Now for the better part of a decade, the stripes have not only been used for recruiting, but created their own marketing campaign. We're known for that now. You know, you, you gotta be known for something and, and we're known for this. And so we like it a lot and we're proud of it. And we just reinstalled new turf last year. So we got another 10 years with stripes for sure. Another decade of the stripes. The Bears are back on the stripes next Saturday, October 29th. That's homecoming against North Alabama. Oh, it's a homecoming. I bet there'll be lots of purple dresses, maybe some. I like how the stripes just and... really just they stand it's unique. Out. It's really, really unique too. Again, Boise has the blue turf. Eastern Washington has a red turf. Uh, I do not know any other school in the I nation. I feel like that red really would be a lot. It, it pops. Would. It pops. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the cool thing about the stripes, though, too, is not only is it a marketing campaign, yes. recruits love it but it's not out of this world insane like a red sure turf sure would be. and it could be confusing to the other team too which is a little home advantage field advantage they're not yeah yeah, hey, yeah. Coach, what Nathan, a good question. coach Nathan Brown's got them going love the UCA Bears yeah and beautiful field and yeah. unique it's another great thing about Arkansas